Shang here, host of the Extreme Full of Fishing channel. Welcome to my humble abode. These are rare, huh? The moments when EPF actually shoots the intro indoors, huh? As you guys can see, I am here in the kitchen of my hotel down in Florida and check this out, huh? Ooh, we actually got a full kitchen over here this time, right? And you all know what that means, huh? Folks have been coming on this YouTube channel for years, man, under this video, under that video, requesting kitchen cooks, kitchen cooks, right? You all know who you are. So I'm actually very pleased to tell you all that your time has cometh. Now easy there, cowboy. I know you all want me to start cooking over here, you know, immediately get to the Asian recipes, right? But before that, we need to go out to procure our fresh ingredient of the day, right? AKA, we need to go out to catch some fish so that we can actually cook the sucker over here. And you know what? This is actually the fun part of the sketch and cook, all right? The fact that I'm down here in Florida, you just never know what you're going to catch, right? So as for this moment, shooting the intro of this video, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to cook at all. <laughs> so this is the plan for the day, man. We're gonna go out to the Intracoastal Waterway, which is about a five minutes walk from the hotel, catch some fish protein, and we're gonna take back here to the hotel and cook it. I'm going to cook a, an amazing meal for you guys. Okay, maybe not amazing, but I'm going to cook a meal, my lunch, and we're going to do a little taste test. Sounds good? All right, let's go to the Intracoastal, check the circumstances, and then we will see what will show up. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just got here to the Intracoastal Waterway. Beautiful morning. And I tell you what, the conditions, the conditions are pretty good. The tide is perfect, as you guys can see, it is pretty high right now. Low tide over here is really the tide that is not so good, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to punch two rods out there. If you guys want to know all about the gear and the bait and what I'm going to be doing today, please refer to the YouTube video that I posted a few days ago, right? That I shot at this exact spot. For now, fellas, I am pretty hungry, not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> I just want to punch my stuff out there, catch some yummy fish, right? And cook the hell out of it, all right? So I'm gonna get my stuff ready, punch it out there, and pray to the gods of fishing that something super yummy is going to show up. Oh, dude, that's 100% a bite. That's 100% a bite. Oh my goodness, dude. What did we get here? Ooh, this may be our lunch, fellas. First solid bite of the day is kind of pulling like a catfish. Are we going to have catfish for lunch? Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. That was a solid hit on the squid. I told you guys the tide was good, didn't I? When I arrived over here, the tide was highest and the tide has just been slowly going down, man. When you have that push, High to low. Dude, it's a stingray. It's a ray. Look at that, it's a ray, bro. Well, I'm not eating that ray, but. All right. <laughs> okay, that's not lunch, bro. But you know what? Let, let's bring it up, though. Let's bring it up. Can, can this rod handle it? I think so. All right, first catch of the day is actually a stingray. Mm, I'm gonna let this little fella go, but gotta be careful with that barb <laughs> and I told that we finally had our lunch over here huh what we got right over here ladies and gentlemen is an Atlantic stingray the Hippanus sabinus and it is not like the meat of this fish is not edible but just like sharks rays actually take a long time to grow and when it comes to reproduction right they don't reproduce in terms of numbers as well as other species of fish so I would rather really just 
let this fish go, right? This one has been inside our little live well over here. When handling this fish, you do have to be very, very careful with the barb on its tail, right? Oh, you see the little barb right over here? So this is how I like to handle them, okay? Usually, I just get my set of pliers and very gently, I clip the tail together with the barb very very gently so that i don't have to break the barb right and then i use my other ring my other hand and i just grab the belly of the beast there we go see like this it is not going to hurt you you see what i'm saying beautiful sample right over here i'm just gonna let it back at the intracoastal all right i'm gonna release the pliers and put the beast back that's it I know the release was not, oh look, mullet swimming by, I know the release was not, you know, as elegant as, I, as you would have wanted, but as you can see, the fish is fine, it's just chilling there on the bottom, right? Not to mention that it had water the entire time, so it didn't suffer from anoxia. All right, at least we got one hit, you know, like 10 minutes being out here. My hopes is that, my hopes is that maybe we will land something, you know, that is a little bit more appetizing than that, right? And uh, kind of selective harvest, right? Something that we can actually harvest without damaging the population too much out there. Oh, that's a bite. That's a very, very small, tiny bite, but it's a bite. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's on. Is this another puffer? Or is this going to be our lunch? Actually, it feels too small to take. Oh, wait a moment. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. This may indeed be some decent meat for our lunch. What is that? Oh, yeah. Look at that. There's some good protein right here. <laughs> you guys actually saw this species, right? This particular species on the first video that I published here on the YouTube channel in this series. This is an Irish Mohara, the Diapterus auratus, and it has some good meat on it. I mean, it is a little bit skinny, right? But it's, it's a good start. <laughs> Oh man, you can't make this up. You really can't make this up. So, as you guys see, I just killed our first catch of the day, right? Good protein, the Irish Mohara. I've emphasized on this YouTube channel before, I am no master of the Ikejime, right? And that's why when I kill my fish, I just use the knife and I slice right behind the head, severing the connection of the brain with the spine while i was doing so i don't even know how i also cut my thumb this way with the back of my knife you know the injuries for this florida trip i'm like captain corona the injuries for this florida trip man they keep piling up we got the knife injury right here then i got this one that is healing if you guys can see that was from a hard head sea catfish on this hand i got a little puncture over here also from a catfish and this one right here this is about three days long it's healing too right you cannot make this up but anyways it is time to put the fish inside our kula a lot of people on the youtube channel usually ask me well leo how do you transport your fish fresh back to your house right or in this case back to the hotel check it out this is what i got i got a little cooler with ice in there right my magic cooler is actually a portable insulated bottle that one of the OG subscribers sent to the YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Tisha. I appreciate it, you know. And believe it or not, right, this thing may look small. It is so convenient because it is actually foam insulated. Not to mention that this thing can fit three stock trout, okay, 10 to 12 inches without a problem all right i'm gonna put my rods back in the water one fish is just not enough for lunch you know what i'm saying so we're going to attempt we're going to attempt to catch at least two more to make a good mix well that is great 
how am I going to play Pokemon Go now and today's community day too with this thumb. I depend on my thumb, you know, to do the little zoom, 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 you know, the curveballs. <laughs> you guys will have to do with the band aid, dude. The struggle is real, man. Alright, Pokemon is good and everything, man, but we got a hit. That kind of feels like a puffer hit, though. Not gonna lie, it feels like something small is hitting on the left rod. Bite, the bite's very tiny, but if I don't get it, it's going to eat my bait. That's usually the dilemma. Yeah, I think it's a puffer. A lot of puffers around here. Wow, better to land the puffer before it steals all your bait. Oh wait, it's not a puffer. What is it? Dude, no. It's another Irish Mohara. I guess that's what we're having for lunch, fellas. We're gonna have some Irish Mohara. Wait a moment, there's something wrong with this Irish Mohara, isn't it? Why does it feel like this Irish Mohara has less meat than regular Mohara? Is it a malnourished Irish Mohara? Well, it's got a little injury right here next to the tail, but you know what? It's okay, little fella. We're gonna, we're gonna put you out of your misery, man. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I really wanted to at least catch one more fish for our kitchen cook, but it is about 12 p.m. right now, and boy, I am getting hungry. So it is about time for me to go back to the hotel and get a lunch cranking. Let me pack up my stuff here real quick, and I'll see you guys back in the kitchen. We just got back here to the hotel, and fellas, let me tell you all, it is so much cooler in here. Feels like heaven. As a matter of fact, I just took a shower, so I'm kind of looking fresh. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I have finally decided on which recipe I am going to be cooking for today, for lunch, right? We're going to cook an Irish Mojara salad. That's right. And I tell you what, this is such a simple recipe that even you can cook at home. All that you need is a bag of greens, some salt, some cumin, some black pepper, a salad dressing of your choice, some oil, and obviously the fish protein of your preference. This is a very nice recipe, you know, for folks who really enjoy a light meal, low calorie meal, especially folks, you know, who like to get their veggies in for the day, right? I mean, kids, if you're watching this right now, it is very important for you to have your portions of veggies per day. So let's get the cooking started with Chef EPF. First things first, we're going to work on the fish. We got two beautiful Irish Mohara samples right over here. The Diapterus auratus. Look how silvery, huh? These fellas are, right? And I tell you what, it can't be fresher than this, man. Directly from the intracoastal back to the hotel. I don't know if folks actually eat these out there or not. If you were watching this YouTube video right now, have you ever eaten? Irish Mohara and if you have you know what why don't you comment below and you let me know how your experience with this particular species was right was it yummy was it delicious was it bad was it fishy I guess in this video we are going to find out the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to fillet this fish and I don't really have the right tools with me down here at the hotel you know I got a cast king knife I got an IKEA knife that the hotel provided, and I got a, my little set of scissors, right? So I'm gonna do my best when it comes to the filleting here to make sure that I get the most meat out of this fish. I guess at the end, before doing the fillet, I kind of decided to de scale this fish. It is actually very, very easy to de scale then, right? All you need to do is get your knife. The Irish Mohara has the scales that are very loose, so you see how easy the scales actually come off, right? It feels like you're just cutting pretty shallow on the fish and all the scales, look at that, they just come out like that, right? After I de-scale this fish, then I'm gonna start on the fillet job. 
All right, I am almost done with the descaling. After I finish this scaling, you know, it's time to do the fillet. I tell you what, fillet in fish, there is really no secret, right? You just try to get as close to the bone as possible so that you waste as little meat as possible. There are multiple videos on YouTube that teach you how to do filleting. So I'm going to leave a few of them in the description of the video if you are interested, all right? Give me 10 minutes with this fish, man. We're gonna have some nice fillets to work on. As you guys can see, after descaling the fish, all you need to do really is fillet the fish, right? Now, obviously, I wish that I had, you know, knives that were a little bit sharper down here, but check it out. This is one fillet. I just took out of the Irish Mohara, right? Our yield is going to be four times this, which seriously, for my salad, this is more than, than enough, right? So give me another six minutes over here and let me finish the fillet job so we can get the cooking going. Check it out, huh? Not bad, not bad at all, man. We got the fillets over here and the carcasses of the Irish Mohara, right? Look at that, huh? Wow, dude, even with dull tools, right? I don't think I did that bad of a job when it comes to the fillet. You kind of can see the other side <laughs> a little bit, right? I do wish I had my fillet knives, but I mean, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, right? Let me tell you all a little something, okay? This yield over here for two Irish Mohara is not bad at all, okay? This is about four ounces of meat right here. So next step now is to marinate this meat and then we're going to work finally on the greens and the salad. Very simple mix. We're gonna put a little bit of salt on top of it. I'm using pink salt, but you can use whatever salt you feel like it. We're going to put a little bit of black pepper, okay? If I can open it, right? This band-aid kind of sucks a little bit. There you have it. And finally, we're going to put a little bit of cumin okay because i'm a big fan of cumin if you don't like cumin you don't need to put on top of a fish at all right now i am going to eat this fish with the skin on right so i'm going to marinate the skin side as well i don't want to have a stroke in the future so i don't need more salt that salt enough but i am going to put black pepper on the other side and hell yeah i'm going to drop the cumin on the skin side man and that's it you see you just ah uh, yeah mm, you see that that's it man and you just let a little four fillets over here marinate for a little bit while you work on your salad now when it comes to the salad come on ladies and gentlemen you ain't gonna make epf do this right i don't need to teach you all how to toss some salad right i mean there's no secret to it really Everyone likes their salad tossed in different ways and today I'm using the Chef's Reserve Kansas Steakhouse Creamy Caesar with Roasted Garlic Dressing Simply because it was on sale at the Publix and I mean, you know, when it comes to tossing salad, I'm pretty hands-on So I just like to use my own hands, all right? Make sure that you spread the dressing uniformly throughout the greens and obviously, right, personal hygiene is very, very important. So make sure that you wash your hands before you do this kind of stuff, right? If you are serving your salad to your guests, uh, maybe you will want to use some utensils instead of your hands because people may think that it is pretty disgusting tossing salad, tossing your salad with your hands, right? But check it out. These are really the results, right? Make sure that you spread it very uniformly and wow, you got some very yummy salad coming up. Now that the salad is tossed, all that you need is to cook the fish. And I tell you what, when it comes to cooking the fish, right? You just put a little bit of oil, all right? A little bit of oil. I'm going to put maybe half, half a cap half a cap all right like i said it's going to be a light low calorie meal man half a cap of oil in you can choose whatever oil of your preference i would go with peanut oil but you know 
Publix down here didn't even have little peanut oil so I bought corn oil make sure that you heat the oil real real fast right I'm using a non stick a sticky pan and boy that's pretty much it you know all you need to do man meat first okay not skin first meat first in the pan and make sure before you put it in that you cut the skin okay because if you don't cut the skin when you flip these pieces obviously the skin is going to curl up which is going to make cooking the meat much more difficult all right all right man two minutes on one side two minutes on the other and then we're gonna be ready for a wonderful meal I really really wish you guys could smell this stuff because it smells great right now all right it is time to turn our meat after two minutes like I said these pieces of fish they are rather small you know make sure that you don't overcook them otherwise your fish is gonna taste like crap son oh yes look at that mmm that is great and since the skin kind of curls up a little bit right you press against it and then you cook for a little bit more and then it's done you guys see how it's starting to get gold and crispy that's when you know that your fish is almost done this is the perfect time man for you to just give one last flip on the skin all right just to make it a little bit hotter and after that bro just don't be shy you can pour the stuff directly on your salad look at that man irish mohara fillet strips you can't make this up man this stuff looks delicious i haven't even tried yet and i know this stuff is going to be banging all right look at that huh that's it man that's it we're done we're done you just put on top of your salad right like that all right four strips of fish and I tell you what, man, this thing is going to be delicious. Here's your fishing salad, man. Fishing salad right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. You can make this up, man. This thing looks so good. It is time for the taste test. You know, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I really fail to understand the majority of catch and take anglers out there I really do sometimes I go out there and I see those huge coolers and people take 20 30 fish back home to eat right and I kind of ask them bro how many people are in your family like what do you even need all those fish for right and they usually reply well I'm going to freeze it and just cook it later so, I mean, it is your freedom, it's your life, your choices. It's cool to do that, it's not against the law, but I can guarantee you, man, that your frozen fish ain't gonna taste like this right here, all right? This is fresh from the intracoastal five minutes from here, man. Woo! Caught in the morning, cooked up, and I'm ready to try it out, okay? So I've eaten Irish Mohara previously, okay, just recently as a matter of fact, right? I even posted that for the inner circle in Snapchat, folks, all right? Here's a piece of the Irish Mohara going in. I know it is going to taste great, so. I wouldn't give it 10 out of 10 because there are better fish out there but boy the fish actually tastes amazing let me eat some of the greens too mm, excuse the noises the is this is a mukbang you know what i'm saying man but i do have to enjoy my lunch i really didn't eat much today at all all right i'm gonna eat one more piece of fish right over here mm. you know the filleting part it does take a little while to get done but it pays off so much because the fish doesn't have bones in it you know what i'm saying it is truly delicious man and i tell you what another thing too you keep the skin on the fish right like i did but you, obviously you have to descale and when you fry it it kind of gives you a little crispy feeling to it oh my goodness dude hmm it's really really good
हूँ एक्सक्यूज मी आई एम रियली रियली हंग्री Hold, hold one side of the mohara. All right. Wow, this is you know what, man. You know thing gets real when EPF gets the ball out of the table, dude. This is real good, man. Holy moly! I could eat a fish salad like this every damn day, bro. Hmm. So good. You know, the cumin complements the fish so well too. Cumin is one of those spices that I really, really like. If you never tried cumin before, try on some chicken, beef, or fish. Just a little bit, you know. Give it a go. You ain't gonna regret it, man. Cause this thing is real, real good, man. Mmm, so good. You know, man. I'm just gonna go, go cool mode over here. You know what I'm saying, bro? Mmm. Oh, dude, it's good. Wow. Mmm. I'm really contemplating in the future just getting my own place down here in Florida, you know, and maybe buying a little apartment or something. Eating fresh fish whole day, every day, man. You know what I'm saying? I could get used to this lifestyle. Mmm, the salad was banging, bro. Five minutes, five minutes, y'all. Just to show you all that when I do this catch and cooks, man, I don't do it just for the YouTube video stuff like that. No, man, this is, this was really my lunch. You know, I'm gonna finish my lunch now with some fruit. I got some tangerines and some pineapple in the refrigerator. And then, in the afternoon, I'm gonna go fishing out there some more, you know? Let me you, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this catch and cook, definitely comment below and let me know if you want me to do more of these in the future, alright? I would be delighted to share with you guys some more uh, Asian recipes or exotic species kind of thing because I am going to be down here in Florida for a little while, all right? But for today, that's it. It's time to go out and fishing again. Thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Tight lines, fellas. Oh, that was good. That hit the spot, man. I'll see you all next time. That's right. Take that, you pig. You're going to survive before my fire blast, bro. I depend on my thumb, you know, to do the little zoom, 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 you know, the curveballs. <laughs> Guess we'll have to do with the band-aid, dude. The struggle is real, man. <laughs>